are starting the recording for our Chaos, Diversity, and Inclusion Working Group meeting on September 30. We were just discussing changing the time, and we will send an email to the mailing list. Okay. So then we can review the action items from last time. Uh, we had one to email Angela, and we did that. Yeah. And she will get back to us when she has time in two or three weeks, I think. Yep. There was one for Matt to set up the IRB for working with the yep. Linux Foundation events data. I did it. Excellent. It's a bit of a weird one because we're not actually running the survey or any of the data collection part. So we'll see what they say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm just asking to look at the data. And they might even come back and say, we don't need one because you're not interacting with any human beings. We, yeah, we are technically not. <laughs> In the data collection, yeah. So and anyway, it's a funny one. Anyway, I submitted it. It was really short because there wasn't much for us to say. Yep. Um, and I'll get back to you on that. OK. Um, on the ASF um, survey, the kickoff was last week. So Chris and the team she built, they are starting the work on it. And Anita Zama is leading the effort to build out a survey. And she's reviewing the list that we had put together um, to see if there are any questions for reuse. So that's the update there. Any questions on that? Just the general sense of the survey being available more broadly beyond the ASF. I know I kind of ask this every time. But the hope yeah. is that <laughs> the hope is that as ASF develops a, a DNI survey that they can kind of use with their projects, that this is a survey that can be reused by other other projects, other foundations, other whomever groups as well. So I'd hate to see this work just only be at the ASF, but that's just my two cents. Yep. And Daniel can probably say a lot more about this but the ASF is very much focused on sharing this work and okay. contributing back to the Chaos Diversity Inclusion Working Group. And yes, it okay. will be released under an open license. It will? Yeah. OK, great. That's good news. That's really all I, not, not, it's not all I care about, but <laughs> that was a very important issue. Yep, and we can, we can talk about it every week. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Until it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep reminding. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Daniel, maybe you can um, correct me, but the timeline is to have the survey um, be shared in two or three weeks. So yeah. Um, but, by the way, sorry for the delay. Um, I was driving. Yeah, so the deadline for the surveys, as far as I remember, is the 20th of October. And this should probably be reviewed a bit earlier, so a week earlier, like two weeks from now, probably. Is it, um, is the deadline like for comment, or is it like here they are, or is it we're running them? Uh, no, so it's for the design of the survey. So we expect to have feedback from ASF members, um, well, anyone willing to definitely share their feedback. Uh, everything is, as far as I remember, everything is going to be public, uh, at least when we have, we ask for feedback and so on. So everything should be in Jira tickets in this case, um, probably in the uh, uh, diversity um, mailing list for the ASF as well. OK. So that date is kind of a completed survey. Is that correct? It is. So then right after the 20th, the idea is to have this run for a month. As far as I remember, ApacheCon Europe is taking place around those dates. Mm -hmm. um, and then once this is in place, the idea is to start looking for the projects we are interested in. 
okay. and for the people we are interested in to start the interview. Okay. Um, I guess we'll share again the interviews, um, the scope and, and everything, even the questions, I guess. Okay. Um, then after this, we'll start, and this is this should be done like by mid January, as far as I remember. Uh, so to have the results of the interviews. So okay. it's like mid-October and then mid-November running the surveys and then mid-December probably the design of the interviews, then mid-January the interviews plus a quantitative approach, and then like mid-February around this, like the final report with everything in place. Okay. Um, are you going to also publish the process around the interviews and kind of the way that the analysis would go? That kind of um, stuff. This is something that I don't know if it's useful in the, I mean, for the project itself, but project it's, uh, well, probably it's useful for DNI, for this working group. So I guess we should. The reason I ask is so we had reached out to Kate with the Zephyr project, mm -hmm. and I've reached out to Lars at the Zen project to identify projects that would be willing to. Um, have the chaos metrics to use the chaos metrics to reveal insights on their projects. And obviously it's some of these survey questions might be very useful mm -hmm. in that regard. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just thinking if, if the surveys and interviews are available along with the processes by which the data is analyzed, that could at least be a repeatable process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this feedback is really, really useful. So thank you for bringing this to the conversation. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, so I, I would probably need a reminder. I okay. say, yeah. I agree with um, Matt that uh, I, when I was doing my survey, I think I shared my survey with you uh, that I'm doing for the new developers. Mm -hmm. um, I was going and looking uh, for examples on how to build a survey or how to do it. If it's a reusable survey we can use with a little bit customization, that'll be awesome. So if you could share it widely or a place where we can just do a search and find it, um, a central place to go, that'll be awesome. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry, and I was late, so maybe Georg mentioned something about this, but the idea was, well, is to first, when we are designing the survey, uh, bring to that survey, all of the expertise you have already served and we have already served in DNI uh, to produce the survey questions. And then uh, whatever we learn from that survey and the interviews, bringing this back to chaos. So it's like a, uh, yeah. That'll be, that'll be awesome because a lot of us, we come into it, some of us are developers and we come in and then we are also learning. Uh, to see um, what are the questions we should ask or what is appropriate to ask and having that would be helpful. And then also we can add a customization for our own projects because open source communities are different in the way mm -hmm. in the, they work. There will be, if there is a little bit of a customization we can do, that will be us. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, this conversation with you, Sue, about the kind of questions you were having for uh, government developers and outreach and so on. My perception and my, my, my first perhaps opinion, personal opinion, is that this survey will be uh, higher level, not that focused on, but maybe, I don't know, so we still have to design this and your feedback will be probably really, really valuable. Uh, but perhaps higher level, because the idea is to have something like 20, 25 questions, so people don't get bored answering questions in the survey. But uh, probably having specific areas, uh, as, as the discussion we had like some weeks ago, how you were dealing with uh, an English native speakers or mm -hmm. looking for more inclusive communities and the perception of the people, this is really, really useful. I don't know if we'll go that in deep. I have no idea, Pro for sure, probably in the in their interviews process, but I don't know what the survey, but. Uh, right, right, right. I'm not recommending adding all of that to your survey. I think it's a, it's a great idea for your survey to be higher level, uh, to be used as an example um, and then maybe some of the questions in your survey can be included in um, other surveys. Like for example, I'm, I'm designing a survey. I could go do a look at your survey as a reference and say, mm. hey, these are the questions I would like to have in mind and then add my own. Not necessarily that you have to be uh, you know, an all encompassing survey for yourself. You know, it can be uh, just a high level survey. 
Yeah. Well, in this case, so just a big disclaimer, I'm not an expert in survey. So the one is Anita Sarma. So she will be leading this part and she's probably the, ha the one having uh, all of this knowledge and all of you. So I'm not an expert in this field. So uh, probably I may, I may say uh, wrong things or assumptions, so, but just in case. So maybe we can invite Anita at some point to one of our meetings and capture that knowledge. Nice. Okay. So that was the update from the ASF survey. Um, we haven't asked, I'm looking at that list. We haven't asked Angela. Remember how she was very interested in including some of the chaos related questions? Yes. In their pre and post uh, event surveys. I was <laughs> talking a lot about surveys, but about potentially branding those. I think that was for you and as these are chaos related questions. Uh, Do you remember that? Yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, well, you know what? Like maybe, I think maybe it's okay. So we just do, like the first thing would be to work with Angela on the data that they receive. Yeah. Then once that conversation starts, then maybe that's the appropriate time to ask about this the second issue. Yep. You're right. Thanks for reminding us. Yeah. I forgot about that. Okay. So, ASF survey. So we have been collecting uh, DNI surveys. Uh, there's um, information on LinkedIn, uh, no, on Twitter. Uh, there's a thread with information that I still want to merge back into the document. So data collection is still ongoing there. But at some point we need to figure out what to do with this list. Um, now that I'm talking about it, I think, yeah, we have the document down here two meetings ago. I think, uh, so I, this list, I always think curating lists on the internet is hard because they're just, they go away and links go dead and you need to kind of have somebody, at you, we're all familiar with this, <laughs> right? And so, um, Maybe using this list as a way to inform the work that's occurring in the chaos project. Um, and that's about it. Um, maybe, I don't know. I'm curating, curating stuff is just really hard, like documents and lists, it's particularly in a group. At least that's my thought, but maybe it's worth the effort. Yeah, my thought for this list is also that we can maybe identify questions or well-worded questions yep. and then include that in our documentation somewhere. I'd be all right with that. But like just, because then it's more of a synthesis of what other people are doing and how that work relates to the chaos project. As opposed to here's a, a list, I don't know how many you have in that list, half a dozen, a dozen maybe? There are really six good ones where we have the data and the questions. Okay. Some others that did some reporting some time ago. Okay. But really six are 
Spot on. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. I mean, six isn't that many in terms of maintaining. Yeah. So maybe we block out time next week to go through the surveys and that would be great. Um, build out the structure for synthesizing. <laughs> synthesizing. <laughs> synthesizing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's a good idea. Do you could you share the six ahead of time? I don't know that I could track them down real easily. Yep. Maybe just send it to the list because then I can at least give them a read ahead of time. Yep, I can do that later okay. this week. Okay. I'll create an agenda item for next week. Okay. Okay, what else are we working on? What else shall we be talking about? We have the onboarding metric. Yep. I'll copy that up. And then um, was there anything with ChaosCon in DNI? and I mean, I know things are just kind of getting rolling on on those calls. But is there anything from the DNI group? So I've been very happy with the last two times where we did just the workshop on DNI metrics. Okay. Um, I'd be happy to do that again. Yeah. Um, maybe by then we can also Maybe we can invite uh, Chris to come and talk about the ASF survey mm -hmm. work and how we work together. I think that would be an interesting session. Actually, that'd be great. Well, even like according to da Daniel, your timeline, your potential timeline, mm -hmm. that would fit pretty well. Yeah. So basic results should be available by then. That'd be great. Maybe, maybe we can even, so I'm just gonna speak out loud here what I'm thinking. Maybe we can make this one of the keynotes um, about how DNI work has found its influence in other areas and to highlight this collaboration between ASF and DNI chaos. I like that idea. Do you know if she's going? Chris? I don't suppose you would. <laughs> so. uh, sure. Are you planning to attend ChaosCon for them? So when, when is that? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's at the ELC in France. It's in Brussels the first weekend of February. Yeah. Ah, no, it's not on my radar yet, but uh, uh, I can uh, look into attending that if, if it would be useful for me to come. Because mm, okay. I would love to see a keynote from you. <laughs> I <have to> say. <laughs> I'll I'll take a look at the schedule and and February you said right. I'll take a look at it, that. Yeah, ChaosCon is January thirty one. Oh, okay. Yep, and I would second having a keynote from you. So, <laughs> but not to put you on the spot by any. Uh, I understand. I <laughs> definitely. I I was thinking maybe it's like closer to like. Uh, uh, in the next uh, couple of a month or so, then I was thinking, oh, I won't be able to, but, but definitely, I'll, I'll look into it and then I'll, um, I'll send you. you know, cool. Okay. Thank you. Great.
Excellent. I like I like the way we are thinking. Okay. Unless there are any other items we want to talk about, we can go back to our onboarding metric and just maybe wrap it up today. <laughs> I am um, optimistic. I have, I have just a small comment before I forget about this. So in some more community, we had a problem that the Google Doc was owned by someone that left or their, her account was closed. So we lost everything. So do we have backups of any document we have in our Google folder, whatever? Because I see here that we have an 80 pages document that we keep growing. So do we have backups of this? Oh. You're talking about the meeting minutes. Yeah, and actually all, all working groups would be the same, right? I mean, they're all long documents. Yeah, example here. So I have, um, I may have created documents uh, for some metrics that we are using when we are discussing in the Google Doc. Mm -hmm. uh, if Viteria disappears at some point, for instance, and everything gets closed, we lose all of those documents. So what can we do? That's all. Yeah, and I'm looking at this one and Emma is the owner. So if this is kind of linked to her Mozilla account, then I don't know. We may have an issue. That's all. So it's just to have some backups policy. Well, here in and in chaos in general. That's all. So yes. So you all know um, worry about this That's the same way that I am. So we can proceed to the onboarding. <laughs> does does Google sponsor open source projects with free organizational accounts for G Suite? I don't know. Because then if we could get one for chaos to store all of our work, then it stays with chaos as long as that org exists. And you could make a couple owners, I'm guessing, in that yeah. org. It's a great point, Daniel, and it's probably mm -hmm. something that we should think about for the entire project. So it just happened to us at the some other place. So yeah, and we said, Oh, we have lost everything. That's really, that would be a bummer. Okay. Okay. That was my agenda topic. I wonder who to ask about this. I, I have a feeling I know someone. I can inquire about this. Maybe you can ask Tony, who was at ChaosCon. I'll, I'll shoot him an email. I'll ask him. <clears throat> Okay, excellent. Then let's move on to onboarding. So last time we went through the strategies and we started work on the metrics. So let's focus on the metrics today then. Does that sound good? Yep. Do you all have the document in front of you? I can also share the Google Doc that we're working in in the chat. Oh, uh -huh. update also from the weekly chaos call last week. Um, we were discussing about potentially changing the template for metrics 
and making it so that we can share the same template across all working groups. Um, I don't think we will have to change a lot on our metrics. Uh, just the headings are gonna shift around and change a little bit. Not so much shift around, just change the wording a little bit. And that way we could align all of the metrics across all of chaos. And putting the, what we came up with last time, or at the community meeting, in a comment. Are you putting it into the onboarding document? Mm, yeah, for some reason I put it on the second page. <laughs> to the first page. No worries. I'll move it. Actually, I'll put it in the document itself. formatting. Oops. <clears throat> so there, that was what came up a lot. Do you see that? I assume you do. This is what came up last week in the community call. So the premise of this was that different working groups were using different templates, which was okay, I think, for the first release, but the structures were slightly different. And um, I was only proposing a template change originally to the metrics that were in say the evolution working group, but Georg brought up that maybe this was an opportunity to create consistency for the metric templates across all working groups, as opposed to even having two in the first place, which is a good idea. And so this, um, the list that I have here provides the proposed headers and subheaders without really describing what they are. I do have, we do have text that describes what they are, but I just wanted to get this in front of you. So the idea was that every metric, no matter any, no matter the working group would contain these first three top level headings. So description objectives and implementation. So all must and it m all must have these things. And then these middle three are really the variable parts that as a working group you could include as a top level heading or not include as a top level heading, kind of de depending on the style of metric. So for example, uh, does your metric come from trace data that's discoverable in a Git repository. So that may lead you to say this one, tools providing metric. Or uh, is your data discoverable via, via interviews, right? It's not available via trace data. So if you're doing quite often DNI work, a lot of that data isn't discoverable by doing trace data work. So it may require a different approach. Um, where you may use something like success metrics, right? So this is what the, the proposal was, is that the top three components would be required for all metrics. And then the middle three are provided kind of based on the nature of the metric and then resources around that metric are required for all. Did I get that right? For those that were on, I think, that were on the community call? 
I was trying to map what we have right now and okay. I think the implementation could be what our strategies currently is. Yep. Although we do have data collection strategies later. In the success metrics part? Um, no, in, in the list. So implementation, we have implementation and data collection strategies. I don't know what to put into implementation for um, DNI if we have data collection strategies. I, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Implementation. Let me go back to the notes. Maybe we should move this work over to our meeting minutes and not do it in onboarding. That's fine. <laughs> it was a, a convenience drop in. Okay. Yep. I'll move it over. Okay. Oh, wait. I know what the. I know what it was. Yeah, go ahead and move it over and then I'll, it was an indenting problem. It'll make more sense once we, once I get the indenting right. Okay. It's moved over. It's in the meeting minutes now. Um, okay. So this, it was that. See what I did? Oh, uh, yep. So that would make more sense then. Okay. Yep. And then we can cross out these four. For DNI. For DNI. Correct. Okay. So then there's only four top level headings that are required a description, the objectives of the metric. And then there's going to be one section that's explicating the discovery of data in some way, and then available resources, right? Yep. Okay. So I, I like this a lot, actually. <laughs> It's very simple. It's much simpler than I think it has been in the past. So I think the proposal that I'm gonna bring to the community as a whole is that all working groups use this format going forward and rework their first released metrics by using this format as well. Yep, and, and we do have a monthly call coming up tomorrow. We do actually. So this would be perfect timing. Yeah. And I don't think we talked about it too last week. It doesn't change the nature of any of the metrics. So there's no text changes or anything that need to change. It's really just a presentation thing. So it's not asking for more. It's not asking for less. It's just a way of presenting the information in a way that's consistent across all working groups. Yep. Okay. So do you want to use this for the onboarding thing? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. So we do have description at the moment. We do have objectives. And then that would be, you know, And that would be data collection strategies. Right? And then success metrics. And then resources.
<laughs> Structurally, this can we get rid of the? Can, do you mind if I get rid of the crossed out things? Just get rid of them. Yeah. For the time being, I mean. Of course. All right. Whoops, what I do? Oh, I got rid of too much. Okay. So what about notes here? Oh, I was just thinking about that. Um, I would say get rid of it. We could capture it in a comment. I'm trying to reduce this. The goal of this is to, to reduce the number of headings and subheadings. <laughs> not make more. So where do you want to subsume it into? What does it say? When looking at contributions across platforms, be aware of the unique contribution patterns. Maybe in objectives? Mm. I think it came out of a discussion of the success metric. So it's a, it's a note on the what if we did something like this? Oops. Just like that. Yeah. I think that solves it. We can even bold it. You know what I mean? Yep. Okay. Okay. I see Shua, you added for mentorship capacity. We just add that. Yep. Um, I gave a another um, example, uh, one for you to refer to. If yeah. Okay. Then we can copy this link. I'm going to resolve this right away. Oh, whoops. Sure, what's the, let's see, I can get the link. Some reason my copy didn't work. Here, when you look at the closed comments, you can get it back. Oh, okay. Here, I'll put it in the document. Yeah, that's the one. I was gonna put it down in the resources. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, maybe we should number the resource so that we can reference them. It's a good idea. At the top. And then we can also add the outreach website and the Google Summer of Code website. Yeah. That'll be coming like six. Okay. Here, I'm adding outreach. -y. And Google Summer of Code. Yep. Okay. Okay. Do we know if these one through three have references somewhere in there? A lot like, of, uh, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was gonna say number two does. The contributor, uh, the contributor funnel. 
the conversion funnel. Yeah. You see the link here? That's yeah, the is that the link from below? Okay. Yeah, so let's just put that. Let's do that like this. And then get rid of the link here. Yep. Sure, did you have some? Um, yes, I, I love it's uh, running. Uh, I'm running the Linux kernel mentorship program, but there are yep. other programs under the umbrella of Community Bridge. Do not know if you want um, oh, those sure. captured here or not, but I can, uh, yeah, you can make a note of that. Next time I will uh, send those out, consult with the individual projects and see if they have websites they want to share. Do you know if anybody is using that yet? with Community Bridge? I am using it to run, uh, that's my platform to run Linux kernel mentorship program. Okay, do you know of any others? Uh, uh, Hyperledger is running theirs. Okay. I do not know if they are totally onboarded on Community Bridge yet, but they are in the process of doing that. But okay. I am actually, right, right now I'm using Community Bridge to run the program. Okay, we're using Community Bridge in Chaos. We just haven't used the mentorship feature Right. So it has the funding, the mentorship, yeah. and then, yes, people comes. Yeah. yeah. I'm using the people part of it. And okay. then currently funding is coming from LF, but that is something that will be included into mentorship programs at some point. Gotcha. Cool. Thanks. Honestly, this is looking pretty good, <laughs> to be honest with you. This um, metric, I don't know what other people's thoughts are. Uh, it would be nice in the qualitative metrics if we could phrase out or word out um, some interview questions or survey questions. Where are you at? In success metrics. In this area? Yeah, that's okay. the one. Because here we say interview community members to understand how they feel. And it would be nice to actually have um, some samples. Some sample questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I guess to define a scale instead of questions. I mean, I would propose getting rid of that too. Unless we say, interview and survey. I think this is more of an action item right here that we can get rid of in a moment. Okay. So is this just about interviewing, do you think, or is it about surveying as well? See what I put up on top? Yeah, I think it's both. Okay. Because surveys scale much better. Yeah. So that's what I think people will gravitate to. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that came out of the surveys that you tracked down? I haven't actually looked at the items themselves yet. That might be the most sensible first place to look. Yeah. Of the six that you have. I mean, maybe they just have a set of questions already around onboarding. Not asking you to do it now, but yeah, something we can do next time. Yeah. I do something. What?
questions. Experiences, please share. Um, all right. Um, so you kind of have the experience question in there. Is I mean, are there, is there a number you're looking for here, Georg, or is it just kind of to get people in the right frame of mind in terms of interview questions? Yeah, these are just some sample questions that okay. if someone wanted to do interviews about onboarding, that they have some questions they can start using. Okay, maybe I mean maybe that's enough. You have a question about your own personal experience. And the questions I added were maybe reflections on things within the project that might serve as impediments during the onboarding process. Yeah. I think that's good. Okay. Well, I, I had two because one was about structures, one was about behaviors, but. Oh, I, I don't know why when I accepted the changes, it um, can't think changes. Oh, sorry, I I'm can't sorry. take it back. Well, I was just accepting all of your changes. It's as simple as that. <laughs> There, I put it back. Well, now we have it twice. <laughs> Stop. Why don't you there. stop yeah. suggesting there. and just edit? I did. <laughs> okay. Done. And I'll refresh my document. Okay. okay. Got it. Okay. So it looks like then I have not uh, reviewed the quantitative ones, all of them, but I think we can almost send this out to the mailing list for a final review after we go through the survey items next week. Yeah, and I think we may want to, the only last thing that we may want to talk about here is if you go way up to the top, Yeah. just where what focus area this resides in. Yeah, I think we already decided that it's going to probably be project and community. I think it makes a ton more sense there. So can we... Oops. We also have the to-do of... We'll have to do a small pull request change to get it out of leadership. Yeah. The to-do I was writing right above the one that you're writing is proposing to first oh. have a discussion on the mailing list before we actually find moving. No problem. Okay, that yeah. works. And we can do that when we send it out for review. Okay, that that would be part of the proposal. Yeah. Okay. And we can say that, hey, we know it was in leadership, there was probably a good reason for it, but as we were developing it, it makes more sense there now. Yep. Excellent. Okay. That does it for me. That was a pretty good meeting. What's done. Very productive meeting, yes. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I did take on several action items. Um, just want to see if we can share some of the work. Is there anyone who would like to send out the email 
to the DNI and Chaos mailing list to ask for a new time for the meeting. That's an easy one. Matt? I see Matt. Click that on. Excellent, thank you. Then I'll put you in here. Does that include making the one as good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, got it. And we can limit it to uh, the time bandwidth between 7 a.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. European time, whatever that time frame is. I don't think we need to look for any other time frame. Or is that already too late, Daniel, or still too early? Let's see what people think. Well, I'm asking what you think. Oh, um, this time is perfect for me. I guess that it's a bit ugly for some others. So, um, yeah. Well, I have slot busy uh, now, which is at 9 a.m. Pacific time and for 30 minutes, but that's all from my side. So I can do it later if you want to for me. Okay. We're also looking at other dates again, other days of the week. Oh, well, during the week, yeah, potentially any time frame between 8 and 10 a.m. Pacific time work for me. Okay, so you want to limit it to 7 p.m. European time? Um, yeah, the latest would be good to, to have. I mean, I'm okay. flexible, so. You got that, Matt? All right, cool. Okay, excellent. Thank you, everyone, for this amazing meeting. Great outcomes. I wish you all a good rest of the week. Till next time. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.